FX Nation, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. And in this video guys, we're going to take a look at some of the setups that we had on Wednesday uh, for either the London session or the US session. A couple of interesting setups uh, that we'll take a look at during uh, this video so you can understand how these particular trades were developed or the entries, the exits and stuff like that. All right, so without further ado guys, let's go ahead and get this video started. All right, so the first one we're going to talk about is going to be uh, Euro Pound. So Euro Pound had a basically a type one setup during uh, the U.S. session. So let's talk about this particular setup here. We go back to it. So you can see that basically during the uh, the London session, we did nothing but basically move straight sideways. So you see the sideways movement here happening with uh with price action so because of this behavior on euro pound so because of this behavior on euro pound essentially what you can expect is some type of a false move to happen typically in the new york session or right before the new york session happens so if you ever find yourself in a situation where you have nothing but a sideways movement during london it's very likely that you're going to get some kind of a false move or stop hunt during or before the opening of the U.S. session. And the trade setup that you want is actually in the U.S. session. All right. So you just have to have patience um, with the setup. Everything that we do here is really about patience because we're not looking for every single setup that we can get. We're just looking for the right ones. So uh, you can also see that the Asian range is 14.9 pips, so 15 pip range. We really want uh, a type one to happen uh, because of the can some of the candles can be pretty big uh, during the, uh, the Asian or London session, which makes it kind of hard to, to decipher if it's a type two, three, or, or whatnot. So, uh, but in this case, we ended up getting a type one setup. Uh, you can see the first leg is here. The second leg is right here. The entry is on this pullback here right after the close of the 13 if you're an aggressive trader. If you are not an aggressive trader, uh, then essentially you're waiting for the crossover which happened on this candle and then you ended up getting another pullback uh, on the next candle and essentially that's your entry. So this particular one basically made it, this trade uh, made it all the way down to uh, the yesterday's high, basically. is this, That's what the CL line is. Um, as far as the, uh, the, stop, the stop loss on this goes, stop loss typically is about 15 pips on these particular trade setups. So somewhere around here, as you can see, the high itself is already well protected because they're not coming, market makers aren't coming back. Uh, for this high, you can see what happened on the second leg. They didn't need to because they already had enough people uh, trapped in going long. All right, so the reason that you can use smaller stop losses in these instances is because the second leg, you can see, did not go up to the first leg, so it didn't come up here at all. The reason that it did not come up here is because they don't need, market makers don't need to come up here at all because they already have enough people trapped. This candle right here, I guarantee you, trapped a lot of buyers, okay? So there's no need for them to go back, so that's why. So 15 pips stop loss, and then of course you get a two to one risk reward ratio, 30 pips, almost to the dot, all right? Now, as far as weekly uh, cycles go on uh, Euro Pound, pretty interesting. We have basically two days of rise and then type one on Wednesday. I'm kind of curious to see basically whether or not we end up, we end up getting um, sell setups for this um, for this on Thursday, basically. And if we do get sell setups, then that would basically make it a market maker cycle. All right, so, so if we do get the cell setups here, maybe a type one to tag this high again, you can expect it to go down, okay? There is still a possibility that this could be a trending cycle. Um, and if that's, if that's the case, 
uh, then you would probably see maybe a type three here or a type two here to go to continue up. So it just really depends on what this looks like at like three o'clock in the morning, right at the beginning of London. That's going to tell you a lot about what you know what you could possibly expect. All right. USD CAD. So USD CAD had another trade here in London. It was a type three trade. And uh, basically what we ended up getting was, you could see price action here went up, came down, and then went right back up, got stopped out in the middle, and then there's your entry there, and you went all the way down. There was no entry in the US session. It was just literally a straight move down uh, from that type three that happened during uh, the London session. So you can see here 17 pip Asian range and you can literally see the, uh, the price action happening here. Straight move down, came back up. There's your pin to the middle of the range. There's your pin also to um, yesterday's high as well. And then there you go with the drop. Now because this behavior happened um, on this pair like this, essentially it looks like it's doing a market maker cycle. So what I would expect um, to happen on Thursday is I would like to see whether or not we could potentially get maybe a type two or a type one sell again um, on this particular pair. We'll just have to see what it looks like at three o'clock or even if it does it during one, then I could do it during um, the US session as well. So keep that in mind. So right now, as of right now, I'm looking at this as um, a market maker cycle. So I would be looking preferably for sales. So this one went down well over 70 pips or so um, and close to a six to one risk to reward ratio. Was, I would say more like a five to one actually when you put in your, uh, your 15 pip stop loss. Um, but great risk to reward ratio and pretty straightforward trade as long as you knew what kind of a cycle you were in. The clues for this trade were right here, where this was this and this. So these two were the clues here as far as what type of a cycle it was going to be in. And then you basically got a nice confirmation when it came up and it literally stopped the tracks in the middle of the range. All right, and the last setup here that we're gonna talk about is Euro JPY. Uh, Euro JPY, basically what it did was it did what we call like to call a um, a trading a trade from the edge, which basically means when you have a first leg uh, somewhere in the Asian session, uh, and then the second leg is literally right on the inside of the box in London. Uh, so you can see here, or the first leg was here, this pin bar. It worked the entire Asian session and then boom, dropped right away. So like at right at 3 o'clock, 2.45, 3 o'clock, the second leg was formed and it was pretty much gone. Now, there was basically a different setup that you could have had if you missed this one. And that was essentially, if we go back here, you'll see that it was basically a type 3 setup. All right, so you'll see that essentially price comes up and then you get one opportunity here when it comes back down and basically hits the brick wall at the middle of the range, okay? And then that would have been another entry as well. So if you missed this one here, this one would have been another entry possibility as well that you could have done. So if you're looking at this one here, 15 pip stop loss, and then you could see this one well, went well over uh, 80 pips or so, all the way to the 800 EMA, well over five to one risk to reward ratio on it. Um, and you can see really that because you had the second opportunity here, this was actually the better entry for the simple fact that this candle here was pretty big on the entry and you really didn't have a pullback that happened. So this is about 17 pip candle. Um, that you would have had uh, as far as an entry goes. And I mean, we're only talking about nine pip difference. And I mean, when we're talking about a move like, you know, 80 pips, what are we really, 
you know, talking about for the best possible entry. Nine pip difference. I'll take the, the better entry over anything any other day. Um, but that was essentially the trade set up on Euro JPY. Um, on this one, essentially same thing. We had a false move that happened on Tuesday, and then it looks like we got a midweek reversal here um, on Wednesday. So I would definitely be looking for more buy setups here for Thursday on this particular pair. Is is what I would be looking for. Okay, if this is going to be a market maker cycle. We should be looking for uh, more buys. Uh, one thing that you might notice, though, is that essentially you're going to be uh, running with the EMAs here. Uh, this is the 50 here, and then this is the 200. So depending on where price is at 3 o'clock, you may get, you know, if you're looking for buys, you, you would want to you would want to look for either a type two or possibly a type one here tagging this previous week's low. That's what I would be looking for um, for buys on this particular pair. All right. So that was just a quick look, guys, at those particular trade setups um, that were available today on these pairs. I hope this was informative and kind of breaks down for you what to look for. Uh, with these uh, trade setups. Guys, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your night.